Let me take another example in which the range of the variable may be dependent upon the range of the parameter and let us see in that case how the Neyman Pearson lemma works. Let us consider say x 1, x 2, x n from uniform 0 theta distribution and we consider a hypothesis testing problem say theta is equal to say 1 against say theta is equal to 2. We may also write here say theta naught and here I may write theta 1 and then I may consider the case theta naught less than theta 1 or theta naught greater than theta 1. So, for convenience we have considered this is special case that theta is equal to 1 and theta is equal to 2. So, let us consider the most powerful test here. So, the joint distribution is 1 by theta to the power n and here the range of the variables is from 0 to theta. So, we write it in this particular form. So, when we write for f naught and f 1, for f naught this is simply 1. So, this is simply see we may if we write here open interval then we need not put equality here we may put it like this otherwise we may put equality the probability of those points will be 0. So, it does not make any difference. Similarly, if we consider f 1, then under f 1 theta is equal to 2. So, it will become 1 by 2 to the power n 0 less than x 1 less than or equal to x n less than 2 it is equal to 0. I was mentioning here that the range of the densities where the two densities are positive is not the same. Here you can see this density is positive for 0 to 1 and this density is positive for 0 to 2. So, let us look at the various cases of f 1 and f naught. Okay. So, we will make it in the form of a table. Let us consider say case uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that we will write 1, 2, 3, 4. So, I will write all the cases which may be trivial or non trivial cases. If we observe x 1 to be less than 0 obviously, this is not possible. So, both the densities f 1 and f naught they are 0 here. If we consider the case 0 is less than so x 1 and uh, x n is less than or equal to 1. In this case the first density is 1 and second density is 1 by 2 to the power n. Then we may have say x 1 of course, may be greater than 0, but x n is say beyond it is beyond 1. In that case what will happen that this first density becomes 0. However, the second density remains 1 by 2 to the power n and then we may have the extreme case that is x n is greater than 2 then this is 0 and this is 0. So, broadly speaking we have to consider the f 1 greater than k f naught from the Neyman Pearson lemma under these 4 cases okay. by n p lemma the m p test is rejecting h naught if f 1 x is greater than k times f naught x. So, here the values of k we have to choose. 
so let us write the here for each case f1 greater than k f0 and the values of k are listed below so let us consider each case in the case 1 if we consider f1 x greater than f0 x now both the values are 0 so this is never possible whatever be the value of k it is never possible f1 x is equal to f k times f0 x that is always true and f1 x less than k f0 x is never possible. Let us consider second case. In the second case, if we look at f1 that is 1 by 2 to the power n greater than k times f0. So, this condition is true if k is greater than sorry k is less than 1 by 2 to the power n. This is true if k is equal to 1 by 2 to the power n. This is true if k is greater than 1 by 2 to the power n. Let us look at the third case. In the third case f naught is 0. So, f 1 greater than k f naught is always true and therefore, this equality or less than is never possible. Let us consider the case 4. Once again both of them are 0. So, inequality is never possible whereas, the equality is always true. So, now based on this we should tell when to reject h naught and when to accept h naught. That means, dependent upon these four cases and the choices of k, we should give what is the test function and at the same time we should also tell that whether the probability of type 1 error is equal to alpha can be achieved for a given value of alpha. So, what we consider in case 1 since f 1 is equal to k f naught is always possible always true. Therefore, whatever be the value of uh, phi 1 it does not make any difference. So, we may take phi 1 as any value. In case 2, if k is less than 1 by 2 to the power n, in this case f 1 is greater than k f naught. That means, this is the corresponding case to rejecting h naught. So, if k is less than 1 by 2 to the power n, we will say reject h naught and in this case we will say accept h naught that means, phi 1 is equal to 0. However, when k is equal to 1 by 2 to the power n then we may again say we may accept or reject depends upon we can assign something of course, the probability of these cases will be 0. So, we can say phi 1 x that is the test function is equal to 1 if k is less than 1 by 2 to the power n it is equal to 0 if k is greater than 1 by 2 to the power n and any value of phi 1 if k is equal to 1 by 2 to the power n. If you look at case 3, in the case 3 this condition is always true. So, we always reject that is phi 1 x is equal to 1 whatever be k that is always reject h naught. Note here that these are also heuristic because what is happening? 
if we are getting the third case that is x n is between 1 and 2 that means naturally the observations are from the density uniform 0 to 2 otherwise observation cannot be greater than 1 and therefore, we should definitely reject H naught and accept H 1. And uh, in the case 4 once again we may put any value any value of phi 1. Now, probability of case 1, 3 and 4 under the null hypothesis this is 0. So, even if we always reject on observing x which comes under cases 1, 3 or 4, our level will be 0. So, for alpha is equal to 0 0.05 etcetera, some given value of alpha or say 0 0.01 or 0.1 etcetera, then what we should do? we should make the probability of rejection in case 2 to be possible. So, we must have rejection in case 2. Now, again if I take k to be greater than 1 by 2 to the power n rejection is not possible. So, the only rejection is possible for k less than 1 by 2 to the power n here rejection is becoming always true. So, alpha will become 1 which is not acceptable. So, therefore, we should have this k equal to 1 by 2 to the power n as a possible value. If k is greater than 1 by 2 to the power n a rejection is not possible. If k is less than 1 by 2 to the power n, we always reject. So, alpha is equal to 1. Therefore, we should have k equal to 1 by 2 to the power n for 0 less than alpha less than 1. So, suppose we take k equal to 1 by 2 to the power n, then phi 1 x is equal to 1 for x in case 3 satisfies 2 of n p lemma. and we can set any value of phi 1 in case 1, 2, 1, 3 or 4 sorry 1, 2 or 4. Let me give concrete case here when I base our decision on x n alone. Uh, you note here that when I am considering x 1, x 2, x n a random sample from uno from 0 to theta, the sufficient statistic is actually x n and x n is actually playing the role here as you have already noticed here. So, let me explain that part in detail. If we base our decision on say y is equal to x n. So, in this case what is happening that let me write here in this case analyzing as before we write expectation of phi 1 y 
for theta is equal to 1 as some gamma times probability of case 2 under theta is equal to 1 plus probability of theta is equal to 1 under case 1, 3 or 4. Now, these are all 0. So, that is equal to gamma into 1 that is equal to gamma. So, we should choose gamma is equal to alpha. So, a most powerful test for level alpha is phi 1 x or phi 1 y is equal to 0 0.0 that is alpha. If y is less than or equal to 1, it is equal to g 1 otherwise. That means, what we are saying reject all the time except for the case when y is less than or equal to 1. If y is less than or equal to 1, then you are rejecting with probability 0 0.05 and otherwise you are accepting. We may also consider the power function here. So, for example, power function here that is equal to point alpha into probability of uh, say y less than or equal to 1 plus probability. So, here I am taking theta is equal to 1 into so, those cases will not occur, this will have probability 0. So, this is actually equal to alpha for this is theta less than 1 and if I take theta greater than 1, then it will become equal to alpha into 1 by theta to the power n plus 1 minus 1 by theta to the power n. So, that is equal to well, you can simplify this value here. So, what we are able to do is that we are able to provide an exact test here for testing parameters in the uniform distribution. We may also consider in a slightly different fashion. Let me just explain it here. Case 2, we may feel intuitively that large values of y are more likely to indicate theta is equal to 2. So, instead of choosing phi y is equal to alpha, we can take say phi 2 y is equal to 1, if y is greater than c, it is equal to 0, if y is less than or equal to c. And if we consider the probability of this, so we are getting here say 0 0.05 is equal to probability of y greater than c that is equal to 1 minus c to the power n. This means we can take c to the power n is equal to 0 0.95 or c is equal to 0 0.95 to the power 1 by n. So, this is an alternative solution here. Of course, this is based on the heuristic considerations that large values of alpha of y are more likely to. So, this part is not coming from NP lemma. In the NP lemma, if we write exactly, we will take that part and the test function is of this nature that phi 1 y is equal to say alpha if y is less than or equal to 1 and it is 1 otherwise. So, these are the two forms that I am considering here. Uh, friends, today we have considered in detail various applications of the Neyman Pearson fundamental lemma, how it gives exact tests for testing simple hypothesis versus a simple hypothesis. Um, uh, the important point that you should note here is that we need the distribution of the criteria. That means, 
our criteria is based on certain function of the random variable which we call test statistic we should be able to say something about the distribution of that under the null hypothesis then only the constant k can be determined if we are unable to determine that then we will not be able to provide the exact form of the test function so in the next lecture as i mentioned we will consider extension of the neyman pearson lemma to consider the composite hypothesis also so in particular we will consider the one sided composite hypothesis testing problems so that i'll be taking up in the following lecture